Flamingos are one of the most recognizable birds in the world. And here at the edge of the Atacama Desert, we find three of the world's six flamingo species. What looks like a dance is using their feet to stir up the bottom while they hold their bills upside down to filter out food from the water. The Andean flamingo is one of the rarest and most threatened of all flamingo species. And estimates show there may be only 30,000 of these birds left in the wild. Its close rare relative, the James or Puna, was thought to have been extinct and was rediscovered in the mid-1950s. The population today is estimated at slightly over 100,000. The third species is the Chilean, with a population of over 300,000. They are more widely distributed across South America than the other two species. We are at the National Flamingo Reserve at the edge of the Atacama Desert. This desert occupies the northern third of Chile, a high, dry plateau. We got an appreciation for how this region was formed when we traveled through the Permamarca area on our way to the Atacama. Permamarca is a picturesque small town at the base of the Hill of Seven Colors. The unique color range is the product of complex geological forces that span far across time from before Pangaea, the last supercontinent, to the seven continents of today's world. The seven colors indicate the composition and the time each layer formed over the last 600 million years. This is even more astonishing when you realize Pangaea didn't come together until 300 million years ago and started to break up 180 million years ago. The huge geological forces of the continental plate movements are evident in the folded land formations that raised this area to 7,500 feet above sea level. From Perma Marca, we travel literally up the road to a pass at 13,700 feet before descending to the Salinas Grande at 11,000 feet, the largest salt flat in Argentina. This plain is the remnant of a lake that dried up 12,000 years ago after the last glacial retreat. Viewing this area of Argentina, Chile, and Bolivia from space, we find a number of salt plains visible. Switching to map view adds to more definition to the salt plains. We are here at Salinas Grande, 275 miles away in Bolivia is the largest salt plain in the world at over 4,000 square miles. In the midst of this area is the National Flamingo Reserve, which also contains salt lagoons that attract the flamingos and other wildlife. Now let's return to Salinas Grande. The salt is harvested from rectangular pools carved into the salt flat. This salt contains boron, potash, and most importantly, lithium. Lithium is powering the modern-day economy. It is in high demand and, due to the destructive nature of the mining, a center of controversy, and one which is threatening the amount of habitat available for the flamingos and other wildlife. The Atacama really underscores the definition of desert, as it is one of the driest places on Earth. Our first views of the Atacama yield a barren but beautiful landscape. There is little life apparent except for a type of desert grass that has adapted its survival to live on water obtained from fog clouds. The eastern edge from where we have arrived is high enough to keep the clouds and rain out. As we saw from the satellite view, there are numerous salt beds, some with incredible blue shallow lakes that reflects the deep blue of a sky mostly devoid of water vapor. The only snow we see is at the top of a 19,400 foot volcano named Lacan Caber. Looking even more void of life is the nearby Valley of the Moon, named for its lunar type landscape. This is also part of the National Flamingo Reserve. It is so dry here that it served as a test bed for the prototype of the Mars rover whose mission it was to search for signs of life. This amphitheater 
was formed by the horizontal accumulations of thin layers of sand, clay, and salt, and then subsequently destroyed over time by movements in the Earth's crust. Wind is another natural factor shaping this area, which is easier to see from the rim above this area. The dryness, almost zero rain, lack of major cities, high altitude, and with over 300 nights of cloudless sky each year, make this an ideal location for astronomy. The Atacama is home to some of the biggest and most powerful telescopes on Earth, and from the rim of Moon Valley, we can see ALMA. ALMA is the world's most powerful radio telescope and the largest astronomical project ever conceived. Because of the expanding universe, much of the information from the visible and infrared is shifted to the millimeter and submillimeter wavelengths, and ALMA is man's window to this part of the universe. The general public has access to the operations support facility, which is at 9,500 feet. Here, our English-speaking guide tells us about the array field of 66 individual antenna dishes located on a higher plateau at over 16,000 feet where there is little atmosphere or weather problems to interfere. A typical dish is 40 feet in diameter and with the amount attached weighs 100 tons. To move the arrays into place, Alma uses two enormous transporters that weigh in at 130 tons apiece without cargo. The dish and mount are then transported 18 miles to the antenna range at 16,700 foot elevation. Because of the high altitude, we cannot visit the antenna range. This image of the transporter with a ray shows the operations support facility in the background. The antenna will be put into place with millimeter accuracy. The array field can include up to 66 antennas and the configurations can be expanded from 1,000 feet to 10 miles. Meanwhile, back at the operations support facility, we do a tour of the labs ending up in the main control room. ALMA opens up a new window on the universe that allows probing the depths of our galaxy to observe the birth of stars and the formation of planets and mankind's search for signs of life in the universe. And as we leave, we resume our own search for signs of life on this high desert plateau. Two of the most unique mammals of South America are the guanaco and the vicuna. This sign shows the relative difference in size between the two. The larger guanaco occupies areas from sea level up to 14,000 feet. The smaller vicuna roam at altitudes between 10,000 and 16,000 feet. In the overlap zone, we find both species. Vicuna are grazing just below the road, and nearby is a small herd of guanaco. Both species are members of the biological family Camelidia, which includes the one and two humped camels of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. This family evolved from a common ancestor in North America 45 million years ago, about the same time period the flamingos date back to. This family also includes two domestic versions, the llama, which is shown here, and the alpaca and then there is a very rare bipedal llama. The vacasha looks like a rabbit, but it is in the rodent family. This similarity is an example of convergent evolution, when different organisms independently evolve similar traits. Its habitat is in the rocky areas at altitudes from 2,500 to 17,000 feet, where it tries to escape from the culpeal fox. The culpio fox is an opportunistic predator that feeds on a wide variety of prey and shows a high degree of adaptability to different habitats from the high deserts to temperate rainforests. Turning to birds, we find a barred sandpiper in the same lagoon with the flamingos. The long wings actually cover the tail and enable one of the longer bird migrations of up to 9,000 miles. This bird nests in the high arctic tundra and winters as far south as the tip of South America, preferring drying lakes up to 15,000 feet in elevation. The giant coot builds large nests out of aquatic vegetation. It is so large that it is too heavy to fly. 
It tips the scales at around 5 pounds. Compare that to our American coot at 1.5 pounds. This is the only coot with red legs, and these feet are their primary weapons for fighting for their territory. This is also a good place to find the scarce Andean goose. A number of research papers have revealed that this goose has developed a mutation in its hemoglobin which stores more oxygen and allows them to fly very high and live high in the Andes at altitudes between 10,000 to 20,000 feet. Next are two species that are also high altitude specialists and are also listed as scarce or not often seen. The Puna teal and the Andean crested duck. Gulls are often called seagulls, which doesn't apply at all to the Andean gull. This gull inhabits the high plateau region far away from the sea. The most common bird song we hear in this region comes from the rufous collared sparrow, which has been studied for its diverse vocalizations. And of course, we also find here the most widely distributed bird in the world, the house sparrow. The Atacama is the driest desert on Earth, other than in polar regions. Yet life has adapted and can thrive unless man intervenes with his quest for resources. Fortunately for these flamingos and other adaptable life forms, nature reserves have been set aside and controls are being imposed on mining and development which should help limit the destruction of these habitats. Hopefully the quest for understanding mankind's place in the universe as represented by ALMA will also take us past the lithium age to technologies that will have less impact on this environment and allow these animals to continue to flourish into the future.